the south of the map, yes. in the color of blue, we have Caverna TV playing as the United States of America and his opponent on the north side of the map. We have Rado Van Bayus the Dust. Rado Van, let, let's just call him Rado Van, right? We? Playing as right. the French in the color red. So, we have our in house USA expert. What do you think about this matchup, Lion? Uh, I think it's, I mean, US, at the moment, USA are pretty much the best Civ in the game. So, obviously, from that perspective, it's going to be USA favored. Um, but the thing is, there's a the reason why USA are so OP at the moment is because there's a couple of particular build orders that make them OP. Um, so if Caverna doesn't follow those OP build orders, uh, and if you if you go to a much more standard build order, and it's pretty much 50-50, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, France do have plenty of options versus USA. They've got you know Cav semis, or they can do Expo or Musketeer Rush and uh, turn it into a semi-fast fortress. Get those two falconets out and like with a lot of matchups like that the fast fortress matchups it can just come down to the two falconet versus three gatling gun micro and whoever kills whoever with the artillery pieces uh, who rather who comes better off tends to win so it could be one of those yes. type of matches so i think it's pretty even i don't think usa particularly destroy them but if uh, USA do decide to go for, you know, the blockhouses into the coal mines, into the church, uh, you know, Pennsylvania church and all that sort of stuff, then, of course, just because USA are the best civ in the game at the moment, they are the better option. Look at this man telling me the USA nerves were like, what? No, they were a lot. But then claiming that it's the best civ in the game at the same time. <laughs> well, let's let, well, let's talk about the nerves because, uh, like I said, um, I, I gave my piece about the, the USA and I, I said to the developers what needs to be nerfed and they had they've listened and a lot of other top players agree what needed to be nerfed it was the two coal mines that needed to be nerfed but were it 25 was... top players that agree with you sorry were 25 top players that agree with you unanimously well i can't talk about it technically <laughs> but there's there's a lot of top players um in a certain discord uh but yeah, so the coal mines have been nerfed. That's two hundred. That's two hundred wood to send, I believe. Uh, the Kentucky Hunters, I think it's called, it was was nerfed. That's five hundred gold to send now. And those two cards are the reason why USA was so strong. Like the eco that two coal mine, uh, two coal mines gives you is insane. And if we take a quick look at Caverna's deck, um, that should show us. So Caverna has. Uh, so he's going for a gold build. He's got that trickle of gold. He's got the bank. Uh, he doesn't look like he's going to be going for the bank. He's... He, what's he aging up with? He isn't aging up yet. He's, oh, oh, sorry. No, that's right. So I thought... Yeah, I it's thought he rather, than, rather than what I wanted to say, he's, he's aging quite quickly because on a livestock map, everyone knows French can just 1210 and that's what he's doing right now. Well, I'm not really agreeing with the 1210 here because he's, I don't think he's going to go into early three hazards. Um... Oh, but what do we see here, Like We see two forward villagers from Sofans. Are we going to see some H2? Yeah, so I was just about to say, so looking at Caverna's deck, it does look like, and he's aging up quite late as well, and that's because he's done the TP into Gold Trickle, so he hasn't gone for the French uh, immigrants. So he's going to be aging up quite slow. This is, it looks like he's aging up with Pennsylvania. Yes, yeah, so he did say yeah. Pennsylvania. So Caverna is actually going for the lame build order. He's going for the really greedy build order, which is what's making USA so OP at the moment, and he's going to want to get goons out and then get... So his first card's going to be Pennsylvania Church, and that's going to have access to the two techs, which is the, the uh, I believe it's the five skirmishers and the five goons. Um, however, the, a really good counter to this build order is 1210. It's like a, the perfect build order to counter this. So if he can get a couple of barracks down right now, he could either go musketeers or bows. I'd rather see bows, to be honest. And if he does that, this is a really good counter. So I, I, I'm actually looking really forward to this. I think I think Radovan is in a really good position right now. As long as he gets those two barracks down quickly. In all honesty, I don't want to see two barracks. I want to see a barracks in stable. And I want to see him try and go for a timing attack. Because he aged up so early, he can manage to mess up around 15 musketeers and 10 hazards and push the base at around minutes 5.36. He wouldn't be in a golden position, I think. Rather than going for uh, musketeers only. The risky thing about going for stable, I mean, it could work, don't get me wrong, but the risky thing about going for stable is if Caverna does decide to ship the Pennsylvania Church as his first card, 
uh, he's gonna have access to that goon tech, which gives about five goons for like 900 food or something. Um, he's not actually doing it. Okay, uh, he's. I think he's. Um, I think he's just going straight. He sees. He probably. Can we see if he scouted the, the forward base? I don't think he did. No, he has no idea. Okay, he doesn't. Well, he does see a dead deer. Hopefully, he noticed it. So. Yeah, maybe because what what people tend to do is they if rather than seven hundred gold they go for the Pennsylvania church yes. trickle, um, which oh. has access to goons. Hello. Well, sorry for that, but Orders. we can see my five musketeers here. There's Hello. a lot of exposed villagers. Now Radovan is not awake. He could have killed the builder easily. Maybe Very even two. Easily. Yeah. Yeah, huge mistake there. Yes. And Caverna also wasn't the most awake at the time, but at least he was a bit more alert to it and managed to not even lose a single HP on one of his goals, except for that. So, so he, is, he is hiding in him. I mean, it, he doesn't have the food to age up right now. So, you know, uh, Radavon is fine here. He should have killed a villager. He was sleeping a little bit there. But, um, you know, if he can continue to idle him, Caverna's going to be in a difficult situation. He does have really safe berry bushes, which is going to help him. But he still needs, what, another 400 food to age up here? Yeah. So the longer Radavon... You know, he can just throw musketeers in here. If he, As long as he keeps him idled, I think he's gonna, it's going to be absolutely fine. I'm thinking one thing. Uh, Caverna actually... Sorry, Radavan at this stage, he, he could have almost won the game if he would have killed a couple of villagers over here. Um, he could have put him far behind economically uh he, he could have had usa on around 14 bills well usa being as strong as it is it wouldn't have meant that he would have lost the game obviously but it would have set him back quite a bit economically and instead he's just sieging this tp and if there's no follow-up in a form of an age up here i think it's going to be very difficult for anyone but we are seeing 700 coin being shipped right now so there could be a very big possibility he will age but this hurting needs to be fixed because this is not good right now yeah, I, I think Radovan is probably, he's playing too timid here. He's decided to go for the TP, but he had Caverna on the ropes. He he had him, you know, uh, when he wasn't able to age up. And he's given he's given Caverna too much time now. And I don't actually like this. The problem with this build order that Caverna's gone for is it's, it's a greedier build than the usual Fast Fortress, but he hasn't gone for the Pennsylvania Church tech. So he, shipped, he decided to ship 700 gold instead. And he, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not paid off for him because... He doesn't have a better eco than a standard French immigrant fast fortress right now. So um, this isn't really paying off for him. Does he have, can we just look at, take a look at his deck one more time? He does have Hamiltonian economics. He does have obviously the church trickles at the top, uh, but he's not gone for any of them. So his eco is not, his eco really is not that great right now. He's, he's even shipped 700 wood. Um, so I'm not really sure what his game plan is here. Uh, I think yes. he's going to want to try and get the Russian blockhouses out um, and, and start double pumping skirmishes. He aged up with skirmishes, but he's going to lose a village or two. Ooh, that looks like only one thing right now. Ooh, two bills. Oh, that's too bad. He did lose two villagers, but yes. again, I, I, I feel like Caverna is being idled a bit too much over here. And building that stable, I don't know if that was the right decision because, you know, you, you let him idle so much, and as we're seeing right now, Radovan is not looking for an age up. He's looking for a must cost, as I said. And this timing is looking really, really dangerous, honestly. I mean, if he manages to catch those block blockhouses off guard, he is in real, real trouble right here. Yeah, so, I mean, losing those. Uh, he's shipping Minutemen, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I think yeah, this is looking really, really good. It's looking really, really good for Radovan. And... Yeah, Caverna's build was just, it wasn't that great, I'll be honest. Uh, he's just, he, he shipped that 700 gold instead of the church tech. The church tech gives you access to so much stuff, it really does. He's even Caverna desperate actually, enough to... Yeah, he cancelled the, the, the blockhouse. He's going to ship the Gatling guns, but what are you going to protect the Gatling guns with? Yeah, and that's a bit of a mistake as well, because the, the blockhouses provide uh, population space, I believe, as well. And he's, he's looking low on wood right now. It's just, Orders? it's just... I feel like Caverna, he, he felt like there was a rush coming and throughout this entire game, he's just got a bit flustered. He's just gotten a bit flustered and he, he hasn't done the, the strict build order and it's going to cost him, I think. One Vil here, if you notice, he catches another one. That's a second Vil. That's an outpost being placed in a very awkward position, honestly. It's not really defending anything at all. Those, are, those, are, yes. those what are they called again? The Gothic guns have come out, come out and... They're actually not going to be harmed uh, at any point here. They're, I think they're going to deal with those as hard as they're left. They're pretty low HP. But again, this this table hasn't produced a single unit so far. 
it, it just feels very, very awkward. All Radovan has to do, obviously, right now is make another five batch of us and he wins the game, probably. But instead, he's going yeah. to age and he's get, gonna get curious here. And I don't know how Cavern is gonna deal with this. Yeah, so the reason he's gone for stable is because the build, uh, this the, the fortress build, is to go open with a stable and then get the block houses out so you can basically, right. and then when the, when the coal mines come in, along with Hamiltonian economics, you, you've, you've essentially got enough eco to double pump uh, skirmishes from a uh, the, the block houses and enough to, to make goons from the stable. Um, but but Caverna's just kind of, he's not really followed the build order as well as he should have done, and he's just kind of making it up as, as he goes along here, and... It's n it's not really working out too well for him. He has literally a zero anti cap there. Yeah. Goons are are coming in, so he's gonna get absolutely slaughtered. Bonjour. Yeah, we we're seeing a three cursive being shipped, and with a little bit of um, market trading for an extra house and some coin, Radovan can get another five additional ones out. And I don't know if it's smart for Caverna to start pushing out right now. Um, the block houses are in a bit of an awkward position. Uh, he can't really place the more forward and he has to kind of protect his badly herded hunts right here so hence why he places them over there but I think those curses are going to be very 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 oh. scary because Caverna has barely any carbon cap why is he pushing? why is he pushing? oh this is not gonna he's he's literally just shipped block houses and he's and he's pushing this is this is gonna be rough I think yeah um I would say he needs extreme good micro, but even with phenomenal micro, he can't hold that many curious ears. This is literally a a, a right click composition right now for France, and he yes. needs to get out of there quickly, or he's dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, he just his Gatlings need to do as much damage to the Musketeers as possible. But yeah, he needs to run his skirmishes out there, but he's, he's just leaving them to the slaughter, uh, and I think that's going to be all she wrote, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's, it's not looking uh, very good right now for for Caverna and his USA, and we, okay. we're seeing a very classic uh, queer skirm composition that I like go with with France when I play it. Um, AE my my mirror match against the uh, Prop, I use it very good. And yeah, USA is kind of looking dead, but then again, it's USA you can never really say die. But 16 minutes, uh, uh, 16 goals in minutes, well, it's not looking very good, is it? No, I think it's going to be GG. Caverna just hasn't followed. He hasn't. He hasn't done a good build order here, and I think he's tried to follow the build order that you know the top players uh, do with USA, which is why they're so good. But he he, he kind of uh, ever since shipping 700 gold, the moment he shipped 700 gold instead of Pennsylvania Church, uh, it, it, it's just gone down here. Like there's just no way he wins from here. I don't think. No. I also don't think so. But I know Caverna. He's gonna he's gonna soldier it out. So, well, he's yeah. on 16 bills. <laughs> like, there's yeah. just no hope right now. How many bills is, is uh, Radovan on? around 33. Yeah, 32 villagers. Yeah, 32, uh, yeah, those are right. CDBs, so you're going to count around about With market bills. Rate. Yeah, that's more than double the info right now. And, uh, hence, the score is reflected. It's almost double as well. So it's looking very tough. It's looking very, very tough. I would have liked to see those five carabine calves directly yes. after the blockhouse, and then you push in with the three. What can um, I do? With the three yes, or uh, Gatling guns, sorry, you would have at least had eight, nine car carbine cap being able to protect. Even though I still think the Crusaders would have made short work of that army, it still would have given him a chance with better micro. Yeah, I, I Caverna should have just gone for a straight fast fortress here. He should have just done the classic Lionheart fast fortress. Ooh, if I do say so myself, he's cancelled it. He's going to ship two more Gatling guns. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he need, he needs a way to deal with his skirmisher mass. Otherwise, you know, I mean, he's I, I can't really see unless he gets really lucky. Unless Radovan literally suicides his army right now, which is obviously always a possibility. As if he suicides his army, it's possible. But uh, yeah, the Gatling guns is, is I, I don't know. Where's all his goons? Does he have? Does he actually have any goons anywhere? Yeah, he's got no. Four. Four. He's got okay. Six. All right. Yeah. The Gallant Guns pop somewhere good, and like I said, if he, if he looks away for 10 seconds and loses all of his skirms, maybe he's still in it. I mean, he's doing a good job of potentially suiciding there by pushing into the Gatling, but just about runs away. A couple more a couple more Gatling shots, and uh, Caverna might have, been, might have been looking to get back into this game, but 
still a lot of goon, a lot of curs, which is looking pretty deadly. Yeah, I think the he's yeah he's also got the two documents right now. Just the eco difference is a bit too big right now. We're at 60 kills for USA still. We're at 36 for France, so around 43, 44 kilometers. It's more than double the eco. We're nearing triple numbers in eco right now, which is looking very, very damning for USA. He's not allowed to take a single bad fight. Like he, every single fight he takes right now, he's supposed to kill every single French unit without any units. And at this point, it's just not a possibility anymore. <laughs> but. Again, knowing Caverna, he's gonna soldier it out, he's gonna try this last fight, and he's gonna see what he's gonna do from there on. So, yeah, and the third one got me down, so that's not the best thing in the world to happen. So, it, it is no. quite, uh, quite over right now. Yeah, and, and Gatlings do lose to Falconets, and oh my goodness me. Yeah. And whatever Curiousers touch, Curiousers are one of the best units to use in this elo range what whatever they touch they're just gonna maul and there we go we have the first game of gg let's go radovan china from caverna what china i have never seen him play china before maybe a couple of games here and there but i don't know caverna as a china player uh Q-ville. come on i mean <laughs> caverna there we go all right so hey, only 18 18 seconds into yeah. the game Ooh. Move. Yeah, you can see that he's stressed. You can see it. The way he's playing right now, he's he's a bit stressed, isn't he? But Radovan, on the other hand, his timing look a little bit better. He's already queued up all the possible builds he can. And why is he chopping? Lad, explain to me. What's going on here? What uh, what does he do? Mikhoakan in this age up? Just go for Central America? So Radovan... America. Uh... I actually think this is quite a good matchup for China. Uh, Mexico actually are regarded as one of the worst teams in the game. If you ask the likes of Julian, uh, Kevin, they'll say that Mexico are the worst team in the game apart from Sweden. How much did you um, pay them and, to say that? Well, you ask them. <laughs> you ask them. <laughs> I think like the, the problem in this matchup, I mean, insurgents are quite a good unit versus China, but... China, I don't know, like, I, I I think Radovan's best option here is to probably rush. I think he has to go insurgent rush, do some damage, uh, try and siege either the TP, take down a, a, a village or two. Uh, maybe, if it was me, I would then go into CA revolt, into, like, cannons and stuff. But, um, you know, I, whether or not Mexico play this in age two or they go to CA revolt... China have really good options versus both of those uh, strategies. Uh, they just have to go for straight fast fortress here. They, you know, they can, they can. I mean, they can play H two as well, to be honest with you. And and I, I, I just think Mexico don't have a really good unit versus China. Like they just, there's, there's not a singly, a singular good unit. I don't think so. Um, and I think China outmass Mexico as well to, to yeah. put on top of it, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, if I, I think if Caverna just plays it safe and goes for a a fast fortress, I think he'll be okay. Mm -hmm. The thing is that I'm, for Caverna's point of view, I'm just worried that Radovan won't have as much success as he did last game and just shutting Caverna down in H2. If Caverna manages to stay calm, hurt his hands better, closer to the TC in the villages, he should be fine by aging up. I saw his deck. It's a bit interesting. He does he does have the Bayang army uh, and Manchus, which is a peculiar decision to have both of them at the same time. He has a very interesting 10 Rattan Shields in H2, which you can use as well, which I like as a situational card. And he's going to go for a France consulate. So he's going to go for the crates of food, probably, and age up with, uh, with the Ceasefire Temple. Not the Ceasefire, the Healing Temple. What do you think? Or is he going to uh, just do a standard um, uh, Summer Palace age up? I think he's going to do Summer Palace. Uh, we see a forward hashi ender there, so it looks like we might see a Insurgent Rush. Yeah, um, pretty said, decent age... yep. Yeah, pretty decent age up time as well. He's going for the 14 vil as opposed to the 15 vil. Um, so looking pretty good. Obviously, they can send the barracks to the hashi ender. You can set the flag down so it builds uh, units quicker. Um and yeah, Caverna definitely needs to age up here with max villagers. Um, that's fine. That's still not a terrible age up time for China. He's going for 
what what the meta is at the moment with China is the French consulate uh, into the is it the 400 food I believe it gives you uh, go yeah. straight into the summer palace that's going to give you even more food about 300 when you age up and that's going to allow you to just ship 700 gold and get into that age up uh, into fortress age as quickly as possible I think he'll be he'll be too greedy maybe at this point if he decides to go for the palace um, but I think if he decides to go for the skirmisher wander instead um, he'll be he'll be pretty pretty okay the, the only thing i don't like is that forward village is yeah, what, what is that say, this, what the in base, the hell is the that 1100 elo really really bad so far uh the summer that, palace being placed at the back of the, at the, uh, the base for some reason that village just barely in range of the tc but if they siege it they stand over here the tc won't be able to protect that village yeah, uh, it's it's just like base building 101. Uh, that is a cool Mexico uh, skin, by the way. Yeah. Um, is he gonna get there? Yeah. Looks like he's just gonna miss, but they, but it doesn't matter anyway because Mexico do age up with the Padre as well, which is a pretty cool unit that can heal units as well. And oh my goodness me, no! What is Raven? He just needs to do. Oh! Oh! He's going oh. For Baja. Are we going to see annexation? I think we're going to see annexation. What's oh, that? yes, Radabon, let's go! What's so, basically, this? what he's going to do here, he's aging up with the Baja California. Um, it's going to. Um, it, it gives you free TPs. Uh, they, they can either be TPs or uh, outposts. Uh, one of them is going to be an outpost. And basically, if you have the majority oh, of trade TPs, yeah, he'll go for the trade monopoly, which uh, costs a card to send. But you look, he's uh, he went for that starting TP. He's now getting a uh, he's getting a factory out, which is going to set to gold, and that's going to allow him to pump out some outlaws. And he, you get max population when you go to Baja as well. So all he needs is three TPs, and and it's actually a really good map to do annexation on. And that's the card that gives the trade monopoly. And uh, once that comes in, Caverna's going to have he's going to have a problem because if Caverna was if Kerner's going for a fast fortress, the time, the clock is ticking. So yeah. it's, it is. And he I, doesn't I have enough coin. Do he doesn't have enough coin A and B. Uh, he's he keeps forgetting the Q bills in between age ups and stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's. I think it should be okay for Kerner. If I'm him, I'm, I'm canceling the Chuku because I'm aging up with uh with the wonder um as soon as possible and. I'm, I, I want to ship an H3 shipment, like, for example, the seven hand mortars, but seeing, as we say, that he does have quite a lot of uh, HP, uh, XP stacked up as of right now, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now, he needs to do something, because if he doesn't move as soon as possible, right, Radovan is just going to win. Dun, 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 dun. The clock is ticking. I love this build. Oh, my God. Annexation is the... the craziest shit ever and i i as you know i know you're a hater of de mechanics um but i i am an absolute mechanic de mechanic enjoyer and there's currently four minutes 20 seconds left and i actually i actually quite like the agent with the the he's shipped the crossbows which is kind of okay because he needs mass and tempo asap i think oh, no. it would be very safe i think it would be very safe for him oh yeah he hasn't even got units out so he needs to ship that 700 word this this Maybe was the boat a big was problem bad. This was yeah. a very big problem. This was a humongous mistake because he didn't th he didn't go for the Russian consulate, so he doesn't have a blockhouse to make units. He's shipping the seven hundred wood right now, which means that he will start H three without a shipment. He barely has any res because he's not keeping his villagers on coin right now, but he's chopping for the market, which is understandable. But you don't need to continue chopping right now. Um, I would even say just market trade and try and get another village out, but. At this stage, I don't see Radovan losing anymore. Uh, I mean, what he he needs another shipment ASAP. So I think what he needs to do, he is aging up with the skirms though, and he's got crossbows. So the only real unit that Radovan will be making is a musketeer type outlaw. He can make banditos, but yeah, it's kind of risky. So I think he's just he could push now, and he could kite this unit mass. What his next shipment needs to be is the hand mortars. If he can get the hand mortars out, remember, he only needs to take down one TP here. If he can take down one TP, he wins the game. So if he now ships 
uh, if he now ships the hand mortars and it comes from that village, it's not actually too far away, he can kite this mass, reduce the mass down, and, and take down that TP with the hand mortars because they have really good range versus building. So that is what he needs to do. But I don't think he... Does he even have the hand mortars in his deck? He does, but he doesn't have time because he's very far away from shipping it. He needs to start kiting some, some units and getting some, some XP because, yes, he's built the villages. He still has that... Uh, that TV, he's making market techs. Why is he doing market techs? He needs all of his resources on making units. <laughs> not, he, that market tech is not going to benefit him in the two minutes that are potentially left in the game. So yeah, like you said, he needs to get XP. He needs to kill units to get XP right now. Yeah, he needs, he to needs hand there we go. There's no, there he's isn't shipping. a card he has. There isn't oh, another card he has. Please ship those hand mortars. Ship him. There we go. Okay. Okay. But okay. Good. Are they gonna come in time to actually do, deal the damage and, and do it for yeah, it? That's what I'm worried about. It, it, as long as they don't get taken down. Oh my God, Coach Guns. Yeah. So that's a really good card. It gives TPs a, like a shotgun charged ability. Of course. So it does a decent damage. Yeah. And it, but the, the best thing about it, the best thing about it is it gives like six really good outlaws. It gives. Uh, so yeah. So um, I, I don't think Cavern has got enough mass here to. He needs to send all of his, all of his villagers. He needs to send Minutemen. He like he literally needs to dive everything in right now. Otherwise, he loses the game. And yeah, I those, don't think he's prepared to do that. Those are already here. <laughs> They're already awaiting the fight. But uh, yeah, those he doesn't have enough mass either to protect them. And oh, they come from the TC and they move so slow anyway. And you need any second you can get. Imagine Every if second they were counts. Already, they could have been there already. They could have already started sieging this in all honesty. Oh, now and now um, Radavon is making the right unit here because he's making the Skirmisher Outlaw, which is the Bandito, and that's going to go toe to toe. He could make, he needs to make monks as well. Like, he needs everything possible. Trey Monopoly has a minute left. There's six seconds, but the Hand Moors come in, and Radavon is going to dive in. This is going to be close. He needs, oh, I, I don't know. I can't call no, it. No, I There's don't think he's going to make in. it. I don't think he's going to make it because two of them are already down. But it's 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 not that far, honestly. I would say even take those two those try and siege as well because you're gonna need to throw the kitchen sink at this. Oh no, oh, he's not 600 gonna get it. HP left, so close. He's not gonna get it. Oh, is he? oh my goodness me, he's shipping oh, tab now. Oh, he just didn't have enough yeah. units to back it up, but with a couple of swings from those Chang Daos, he could have actually taken it down. That is that is a massive shame. That is horrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like the thing, I think the thing that cost Caverna here, he, he shipped the bows because he saw the forward Hacienda. So I think he was worried about an insurgent rush, but he should have, he should have stopped shipping them the moment he saw the Baja revolt. And yeah, I think that's going to cost him. Oh my God. <laughs> we get oh an annexation God. win. Let's go. We're going to see a classic matchup and a matchup that Caverna likes to play. This is going to be Ottoman versus Brit. So in the south yeah, side yeah. of the map, in the color blue, we have Caverna playing as the Ottomans. Already more alert than last game. Oh, Moving his explorer quicker. For some reason, shooting it. Oh, there we go. Melee. Uh, playing against in the north side of the map, in the color red, Not Radovan. The boys, the dust, whatever. Yes. Radovan playing as the British. Now, as somewhat of a brain, brain, a Brit main, I can tell you this matchup is horrendous. Um, I still haven't figured out what the best thing is. Sometimes it's forward must cast. Sometimes I try in base. Um, but it's it's very difficult because Ottoman has so much versatility in this matchup. They can go for H2, um, Abus, and Jan. They can go for an FF. They can do a world of trouble to Brits. And it's, it's a very difficult matchup to play. What do you think about this? Yeah, I think it's difficult for Brits in the sense of it's not easy to know what Ottoman are going to do. I think if, like like you said, Ottoman can kind of do anything in this game and Brits kind of has to adapt to how Ottoman play uh, rather than the other way around. So Ottomans can kind of do what they want whilst Brits are the ones that have to adapt to how Ottoman play. So like you said, the FI, very very versatile you can ship spahi aid it with abbas you, uh, there's just there's so many options for otto and it, it is difficult for brits i think brits best option is probably honestly just to go for like uh, i i really like the vc boom in this in this um in this matchup uh if you if you go for the vc boom virginia uh company is it boom uh, yeah. you, you kind of use your manners in uh, like a wall formation 
And so that's that covers the age two play. Whilst if Ottoman go for an age three play, for example, then you've gone for the boom on top of it, which gives you really good eco. You can go for Fortress Age yourself. You, you've got really good options for villager pools. I think the, uh, you know, the villager pool in this matchup is really good. Uh, and if, if Ottoman decides to go for the industrial, you know, you've gone for a big mana boom and you've got much better eco than your opponent. So I think this, you know, there are there are options for Brits, but like I said, they have to adapt to the Ottoman style and build. Watching both players' deck, uh, we, we're seeing quite a, a standard uh, H3 oriented deck from Caverna over here. But when we're looking at Radovan's deck, as someone who plays Brit, as I said, I am not a fan of this deck. Uh, I'll give you two reasons. First of all, you have the exotic hardwoods in H1, which I don't think is a card you almost ever send. This is a card you try and send in H4 when you're already in the late late game, right? Um, it gives you less versatility, no VC, so he doesn't plan on opening with the with the trading post, which is acceptable. But he does have spice trade here while having four bills, which is, in my opinion, you need to have either one of them, and I like four bills more. But you need the 600 coin. Because when the time comes and you have to start investing into Hazars, you want to ship that 700 coin for the initial uh, production of Hazars. And then you need the 600 coin to age up. So I'm, I'm not very, very big fan of, of, uh, of this deck right now. But let's see what it brings. Let's see what he will try to do. He's already spreading his bills over here, over yes. there, getting the hunts. And Caverna is already... Almost age up. He's uh, going to age up with the quartermaster. As we can see, he is gearing up for a straight negative F. I think, which is uh, which is what you would expect Brit to do. Uh, uh, sorry, not Brit. Ottoman to do. So, let's see. Let's see what it brings. What do you think so far? Do you know what? Do you know what? Every Brit in this matchup, what age one card they need, and I what? don't see it enough. And I I just don't understand why. Pioneers. So exactly. Brit's best, Brit's best option in this in this matchup is the villager pool. That even even if Caverna, even if Ottoman go for an FI, usually you see the fast fortress and you see the two kind of falconets at nine minutes and that sort of timing. If Brit's mana booms and then ships pioneers, they can still be age two and just mass hazards and musketeers. But the villager pool, imagine thirty five to forty Hi. villagers with Pioneers yes. against 20 Jans and 2 Falconets. They're just going to get absolutely wrecked. And so yeah. I, I, I don't understand why we don't see enough Pioneers, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but this is this is looking a bit uh, iffy. This, is a, this isn't a forward base because it's yes. quite close to your main base and it's not forward enough to actually put pressure in H2. It's kind of a middle base from Radovan. Yes. And this is not good against an FF. You either want to in base, or you want to really focus on a timing attack, you want to ship 700 coin first, um, which I'm not seeing him doing, so this is a bit questionable, I think it plays into the auto player's hands right now, he's already shipped his 700 coin, he's picking up his 400 wood uh, crates, he's also shipping the 700 wood, he's going to be looking to age up relatively quickly right now, and uh, if he manages to, no, Caverna, no, 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 that's 10 villagers, that is 80% of your economy, get them out. You don't need to kill the explorer. And he didn't even kill him. Oh my god. I, I yeah, I mean if you if you don't kill it, it, it that's not that's terrible. But I think killing I think killing an explorer with full HP is actually not a terrible option, uh, to be honest, even if it does cost ten. It's only a temporary ten villagers. Um, just because I feel again, soaking up four hundred or five hundred damage in a big fight can be the difference between winning and losing the fight. Um, but as long as, as long as, I think Radovan's fine here. I mean, yeah, he might pick up a villager, but as long as he takes down that forward base, because I think there was a barracks, right? Caverna built a yeah. barracks? Yeah, no, he's building um, an artillery foundry right now, actually. Oh, who built the barracks in the middle of the map? Was that, um, that was I take it that was Radovan. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So he's, he's deciding to apply pressure here. I think that's fine. I, I think that's absolutely fine against the Ottoman FF, but if Ottoman are aging up, what are they aging up with? If he ages up with the Abbas, then it's GG. Uh, he is aging up with the Abbas, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat it again and I'm going to say it. Caverna has been losing all of his games almost this series because of horrible hurting. Like, those eight musketeers should not be able to apply that much pressure as they are applying right now. He has to hurt better. He has to work on it. And I tell them this all the time when I'm trying to to, you know, uh, watch his gameplay. He has to hurt better, and he's going for us. 
they will. Yeah, I agree. Herding is 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 clearly hurt in this game, all the way from back from the USA game. Uh, this game, it hasn't been great either. Uh, unfortunately, he got a back herd there, which is really unfortunate. But uh, he's going to age up. Uh, Radovan has killed one villager, um, and he's lost a few musketeers. He is going to take down a TP as well, so that's not terrible. Um, Radovan, it's, you know, he's he's going to be relatively happy with that. I think if Caverna can, one uh, K would really. And he's, then going for a mass cut. he's going for a skirm gun composition, here, oh, but it, the thing is, oh that yeah, but oh, this, yeah. this, 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 I, I, I want to have a chat. Uh, regardless of whoever wins this game or not, I got to have a chat about the build order for Ottoman with uh, Caverna because the you you can go for um, the Cav Archer Abus build for sure, but to do that. You have, not like this. An, not you like have this. to do an H2 with the five villager start, so you have a bit of economy. Yes, you have exactly. to semi-FF with Delis. Because if exactly. you're going to go into this yeah. naked, especially with shipping a thousand wood, you're going to have a very difficult time. And if Radovan even had five hus right now, which he's probably training, yeah, then this could be GG very, very quickly. Just he, needs he, to Jan Falk. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just needs to Jan Falk. That's that's the obvious answer because by now Brits only has twenty one yes. musketeers, and you could have, we could have seen with uh, with eight janissaries plus about fifteen trade, maybe even five cents in transition. We could have seen the same amount of janissaries and two falcon. That's on the field right now. Instead, we're going to see two cow archers and five avis guns at minute eight with eighteen villagers to show for. And I'll tell you why this sucks. I'll tell you why yeah, this sucks. This is very right. bad. This sucks because, I mean, even if he was going for Falconets instead of Abbas, that would be even better. But the reason this sucks is because he has, he loses by shipping resource crates, he loses all of his tempo. And he's just allowing himself to go further and further behind because Brits have the better eco here. So it's going to, plus on top of this, he needs really meticulous micro to pull this off. And I don't know if Caverna under the current kind of nervousness that he has right now that he has that temperament so and there's so there's a lot more that can go wrong so um yeah i i don't think radovon actually needs to push in here to be honest with you i think he just needs to back up and just mass that's all radovon needs to do is back up and mass when he sees an abyss gun when he sees the stable and the artillery foundry he needs to immediately know that there's going to be abyss guns and he just needs to back up and mass uh just yeah, mass a shitload and, of needs to buy some food right now and he has to get his minute man. Those Millenmen could actually win the game at this point. He really has to get them. Yeah. No, oh, there we go. We, he does get them. And now, actually, Radovan is giving Caverna wood to come back into this game because this push was wholly unnecessary, as you were saying. And at the moment, um, Caverna's TC is still not up yet. So after this push, losing all of these units is actually really bad for Brits because he didn't even focus on aging up until now. And as we can see, he's, he's mining the coin to age up. So economy-wise, yes, he's on, looking way it. better right now. But it gives... Ottoman the breathing space while Brits tries to age up right now. He committed the cardinal sin of pushing in right. when he was aging up. Yep. How many times <laughs> do casters need to say this before people start understanding? I admit I am a sinner as well. I, I have been known to, to um, commit that sin, but you never push in when you're aging up. And like you said, he's just <laughs> all he needs to do is back up and max or age up. And now he's just. Uh, allowing Caverna to get back into the game and his mass is starting to look okay it's the like problem is he doesn't white, have much siege yeah he just doesn't have that much siege that's the he, problem he can get rid of that problem by just shipping two Falconets at the moment he, I think he has quite enough anti cab he's going to make more cavalry archers if, if I'm him I even cancel that one Abus gun to finish uh, my complete batch of, of uh, cav archers right now and just ship my Falconets and push and destroy this British forward base before Brit ages up to the next stage. And then he will be looking in an already better position. But again, this is another problem that Caverna has. He never, ever, ever finishes his matches, which is, as we know, a very big problem. But ooh, I think Radovan is going to take the fight while he's aging, which again, not a thing you want to do. Let this, t this, let this tower go down because you don't want to fight H2 units with H2 units, especially when it's probably the first or second best scrim group composition in the game with Muscas. I think, I don't know how far along he is at aging up, but I think what he wanted to do was maybe protect the tower and age up or something, but he's way too far behind, so I'm not sure what he was doing there. Um, Abbas Gun's coming in. I think Caverna just needs to, as, as long as Caverna just, he priority at this point, he just needs to prioritize cavalry archers as opposed to Abbas Gun's. He's got enough Abbas Gun's to deal with the Musketeers uh, and any Falconets. As long as he gets enough cavalry archers, there's no way 
I don't see how Radovan gets back into this game as long as Caverna doesn't do any mistakes and he doesn't lose any villagers in this raid here. Oh, this is a very big raid and he only has two cavalry archers right now and he's popping the Avis guns, which if the Avis guns pop on the side of those archers, or, or it's going to be really deadly because they're going to take them all out. But for some reason, Radovan is scared by two uh, <laughs> two cavalry archers and six Avis where you can just right click to finish that whole situation off. This Caverna, don't do this. Oof, he's oh, he's very, very oh, that's lucky. So risky. Yeah, he's that's... very, very lucky that he didn't queue any Hazars earlier because they could have cleaned all of those Abus up. Um, Hazars yeah, coming back in. It's it's looking like quite a competitive game right now because Radovan is stacking a lot of resources. It's just what angles is uh, is Caverna going to push from? But is he actually going to be successful in his pushes? So Radovan can literally go pure longbow artillery here so he can literally ship two falconets and go pure longbow and that's he his, he's on 43 bills he's got a lot of resources actually um but yeah that's how he wins this game he needs to just go mass longbow and ship two two falconets that's how he wins this it counters um his whole armor um unit comp so um yeah i don't know this is still i i, I felt like radovan was out of the game here but okay that's a lot of abyss guns but yeah. I, I think Radovan is definitely still in this game. It's close. He's he's harassing his base, which is really good. He's buying himself loads of time. Uh, being really annoying for Caverna. And yeah, if he kills a few villagers, um, he's looking pretty good. I mean, Caverna's on two TCs as well, which, uh, you know, that 1k wood is now starting to pay off. Um, yeah, anybody's game right now, but probably probably favourable for Caverna right now. That's a, that's a, that's a scary mass of Abbas guns. I wouldn't say it because... The thing is, Caverna has been probing and pushing around with his army in all of the line of sight of Radovan. He's been able to see everything that he does, but now actually he's going to get some big raids potentially with those cow archers and uh, Abus guns. Too bad for him that Abus guns really suck at killing villagers. Oh, but ooh, he didn't get that last villager. But oh, these are a lot of villagers that are going to be exposed right now. And if Caverna manages to. to to push in and, and, and try and kill them with the cavalry archers while the Apus can deal with the with the longbows from the back. This could actually be really good. And as we can see, the, the scores are actually equaling up. And Caverna, I know one thing about him, he has very good skirm with micro, so he can he can do a potentially very good job over here and clean up all of this mess. And those cavalry archers just need to go back and start looking for those bills while those Apus guns deal with the longbows. Because longbows they, they just can't stand and fighting his Apus guns. So no Caverna, you just go back and you look for all of those villagers over here. And you disrupt his eco, eco completely. Let's go back. I mean, he uh, t if he's got a good Abbas micro there, he will fucking absolutely wreck those yeah. longbows. But as we can see, uh, right now. yeah. I mean, uh, this is the point where you need three Abbas guns. I think kill a longbow in one hit. So you want to be microing three Abbas per longbow, and you can literally get like five kills a piece there. But um, he, he does enough there to deal with it. He's going to see all of those villagers. I think now he backs up. At this point, he backs up and just harasses. Oh, look at that! Clean up. Yeah, as soon as he sees those those falconets, he's gonna back up. Yeah, and try and take down as many as many villagers as he's he can. Got some falconets of his own. Let's see who's gonna win the falc, Michael. This is going to be in the line of sight, actually. And oh, uh, he, he hit the mana. What? Oh no, he's hitting the bills. Oh. No, Caverna, you gotta focus, focus, focus the. Uh, Caverna, don't make me crazy. This this is where the village ball comes in, and this is why I say pioneers is so good right now. Uh, because imagine a villager pool as well. There's like 20 villagers around. Yes, there we go. Damage. He does take down two falconets actually, but he doesn't have any master protectors. And in all honesty, the, the, the British units right now just clean this up. And and no, take another shot. It's already so low HP. You can't pull it back. Ah. <laughs> I'm getting frustrated right now. But but, Ottoman right now on 32 bills, while Brit is stuck at 40 bills. So the eco is is kind of closed for now. And Radovan isn't on a very high enter population, and more and more Vils are going to die right here to those cab archers and Abus guns. And if I'm not mistaken, Caverna has shipped his, his Spahi. There we go. Um, and they can shift the balance of power in this game completely. If again he manages to, to get some, some fuller batches out of this, um, Caverna will be looking in a golden position right here, in all honesty. In all honesty. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Spahi is the the exact option. That's exactly what he needs right now. It's going to destroy on, villagers, longbows, hazars, age two musketeers. He's got Abbas guns behind his Abbas gun Spahi combo is is so good. Like it it like Abbas guns kill whatever counters Spahi. Like it's such a good combination. So I think if as long as Caverna doesn't mess up his micro here, uh, this should be GG if he if he lands this right. Yeah, if Caverna manages to right click right now. 
what has he got here? Like, uh, not a lot of Abus guns, but enough to deal with any potential musketeers or anti cavalry units. Those Pahi at the moment are doing a very good job at killing those villagers. He's just gonna harass him and then back off. Let the Abus do some work. But there we go. Is he finally going to take the engagement? I think he should. And there we go. Very nice drag box micro to protect those uh, Abus guns from the Hazars. And we've got more reinforcing Abus guns. We've got six Abus guns, which doesn't look like much, but let's not forget those are Abus guns. Abus guns do a hell of a lot of damage. And once they manage to deal with those dragoons, those Pahi that are actually almost all by two dead are going to be able to do a lot of damage. Let's not forget those musketeers are here are also H2. All the dragoons are almost gone, and cavalry archers will fall quite rapidly. Actually, to the wrong ones. Hmm. this is actually a very split fight. I don't know. Who took this i think radovan actually won this fight yeah I, 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 oh, that was, it's kind of a little bit painful to watch actually uh, caverna just over microed his spahi uh you know they're not hazards generally you just want them smashing yeah. in yeah. and just like doing doing attacks whilst he was he was he was kind of mini microing them to try and make sure they went on the longbows and he it, it, that's not how you, that's not how you micro a spy. <laughs> you yeah. just want to smash them in, in in a in a situation like that. Make sure they're attacking, and you would have what he would have cleaned the fight really easily. But uh, see so a little bit of miss micro there. It's just uh, the scores are still looking good for Otto though. Um, when it's that close, so the I think thing is still... Otto is is getting stagecoach right now, and he's on more vils than oh no, Brit just shipped the eight vil card, and now he's ahead of Konosky again. But for a short period of time, he had more vils than Brit, but. As we all know, Brit has the weaker army, so he, it needs the better eco. So relatively, I would still say Caverna is ahead, especially with that um, with that stagecoach going to come in. He's finally able to start completing all of his batches. So this is looking really, really scary for uh, for Radovan. It all depends on when Caverna is going to pick a fight. Is he going to pick a fight at the right time when he has enough mass? Because at the moment, all of those longbows are going to make short work of the Abus and the Cav Archers. That Caverna has, so he has to pick a fight at a very good time. Let's have a look at Brit, see what Brits are doing, because uh, I mean, if he if he's able to get a really good longbow goon mass out, um, you know, he's he can still win this game, to be honest. Yeah, he can, but losing those losing all of those dragoons for free was was not good for him. He lost no. the dragoons. What is he doing? Nothing. What's what's the intention of what? what uh, why would you send fire? I, like, someone tell me, someone tell me what the thought process is between. Uh, behind sending five goons out into the middle of the map like is, is he trying to raid with those five goons like five goons can't kill a villager it takes like two or three hits with five goons to kill one villager like there's just it's just no way you would ever send five goons to do that it's just just yeah terrible terrible idea there by radovan and uh, you know but it's uh, this game actually this is kind of feels like the first time i've seen radovan make a couple of mistakes for, for this series like he's played pretty flawlessly the other two games but this game is starting to make he's starting to make some mistakes and uh caverna's kind of baiting those mistakes in and but i mean caverna hasn't played perfectly himself but um you know when you, when you're in a tournament setting um it's much more it's much better to make mistakes with otto than it is brits because yeah you know, obviously um, yeah otto don't need as much uh, macro and stuff so um yeah, I don't know. Scores are really close. It's, it's, this is still a really close game, to be honest. One thing I'm worried about right now is um, those Abus guns alone aren't going to be able to deal with those longbows because when they stand and shoot, longbows actually do a, a good, relatively good job against Abus guns. And that's what I wanted to say. There we go. We need to see a, a, a deli switch because I believe he has enough anti cap. We only have, what, five H2 Hazards right now out on the field against uh, 12 veteran cav archers. Cav archers are going to be able to, to do a very good job. Um, against those Hazars, I think we just need about 10 Delhi and we can go in and, and smash this British army but for now again he needs to definitely make sure he's not taking a bad fight but what I'm liking right now he's taking the 2p native post and he's actually taking 2p poison arrow folks which is going to buff his longbow and as, as you can see those longbows are making short work of those Abus guns he needs to get them out of range ASAP because he's losing all of them and until Caverna doesn't manage to at least double produce units, and I don't know, there's something very, very awkward going on with, with Caverna's eco throughout the entire game. It, it feels like he just doesn't manage to, to get any units out on the field. It, it feels like his eco is always lacking somehow, even though he has a very nice and healthy villager population at this point. It feels like he's not able to capitalize on it. So, he sees that the Abus are very expensive units, and there are a lot, so... 
he, he's actually opting to go for um, Amos guns right now, and we see simultaneously a very big raid right now coming from Brits. Uh, although those cab archers are going to be able to catch those Hazards, that's 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 actually really big. You don't want to lose too many Hazards here. Um, so when those Falconets eventually pop, they're going to be able to do quite a number on those longbows if he manages to get about two. But again, he has to market trade to do that. Without market trading, it's going to be very difficult. And Caverna, if you get two Falconets here, you could spell the GG for yourself. You could win your first game. Please pay attention and do it. But he's not going to do it. So that's uh, yeah. I mean, that's too I like the Delhi though. The, the Delhi is a nice shot because they they act as a as a meat shield against the longbows, and it allows Abbas guns just to kind of uh, put the put the power on whilst the longbows get distracted and they can't really. Uh, what you want with, with longbows, obviously, is just to attack move. But when you've got delis in front of their face, they can't attack move. So they can't, you know, they need to manually target the Abbas guns and make it as frustrating as possible for them. But um, again, it's still really close. But Caverna's on three TCs now. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's anybody's game still. Caverna is on three TCs. And that Falconet has actually done a lot of work right now. Those two delis coming in. He's slowly but surely chipping away at all of those longbows. But... The longbows at this point they have 26 range. It's very difficult for the Abus to get anywhere near them without getting completely torched. But he, he's doing a good job, and those five supporting Delhi that are coming in right now, they're they're gonna be able to clean everything he up because ready. he's only got two Azars out on the field, and the the anti cav uh, count that the Carinta has right now and the map control that he has is is quite convincing. If Caverna also opens his eyes and goes for one raid on the left side of the map, it's you know, that's all she will at this point. So, let's see. Is... Is Caverna? Oh, I thought I, I saw some fucking nice, but I didn't. He's going into double Abus, double Delhi production, which I really, really like. I think Delhi, Delhi Abus is the winning composition right now. Oh, get your visual. I, 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 would, I would cancel both of those Abus guns, and I would yeah. get 10 Delis out ASAP. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's going to do that. No, and he's refusing to market trade the entire game, which infuriates me to the max. Um, you and your bloody market trades, my god. Yes, but one market trade there, he gets a full batch of Delhi and this game is over. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. He he needed he needed a full batch of Delhi. But, I mean, he's probably going to clean up anyway, but yeah, a full batch of Delhi would have just really secured it. Yeah, there. it would have it just put the, the hammer on the coffin, uh, the nail on the coffin, sorry. But don't go for the treasure right now. What are you doing? Just keep killing those wheels. Send your Delhi back. There we go. That's all you got to do. That one <laughs> An Abbas gun that dying to a <laughs> Oh my god, he's, he's being very indecisive. Man. He's in a very good position. If he doesn't manage to capitalize on this good position, rather than, as we saw, he's a very solid player. He, You don't want to give him a chance to come back into this game. You want to finish this shit right now. So, <laughs> go for it, Caverna. Don't, don't, don't sit around and, and, and play with your fingers. Just finish the deli batch. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Not exactly finished, but it's two more units than <laughs> than what he had initially queued up. So we'll, we'll take it. Every every small victory counts. But yeah, he's, he's reaching a really good point where he's got he's got stagecoach, which is really paying off for him right now as well. When he's got forty eight yeah. villagers, so he's he's looking really good. Although Radovan technically still has the better better eco, it's uh it's all villager eco and it's harder to mi macro and he doesn't have as yeah. good units and on, yeah as, as, as the moment caverna finds where his villages are i think it's gonna be gg let's not forget the natural resources that are safe for radovan are actually running out this is practically his two last hunts he can't really access that hunt it's too close to caverna and caverna is going for mills Huh. Why is Caverna going for Mills? Why is he giving Radovan a chance to win this game? Because Caverna is extremely stressed right now. He's going to in his, power, in his power not to lose, so he doesn't want to get raided. And he probably wants to boost the score a bit, so he's like, you know what? Mills, fuck it. Let's go. I mean, I, I kind of get it. Finish your um, batch, finish the batch, finish it, finish it, finish it. If I got a penny every time Caverna didn't finish a batch, I swear to God I would have paid off. He's making Tens the right unit comp though. Adding, yeah. adding the Delhi, adding the Delhi has won him this game. If he wins the game, adding the Delhi is is what did it. Um, he just needs to. He just needs. I like. Ooh, he's not. Ooh, um... ooh. Caverno. He just shipped five five vils. Huh? He oh, doesn't nice. even have it in deck. Wait, how how did he ship? He it? does oh, have he it. Does, in he does. Sorry, sorry. Why did he ship five vils? Again, use that goddamn market and ship mans. 
The you thing about whenever you're playing Brits, whenever you're playing Brits, anyone that's listening in, in chat, whenever you're playing Brits, the way to punish them, in, especially in this situation, is to run around the map and find where the villagers are. That, that, that's, that is Brits' specialty, is mana booming. It's lots of villagers. that He needs to punish the villagers. He's currently sieging TPs and manners. That is, you're wasting time. You need to you need to hit his eco, and you, you, that's not diving into the TC either. Uh, a lot of people make will make that mistake against Brits and just dive into the TC and hoping that will win the game. You need to find the villagers. That's that's how you win this game. Is find the villagers, find the natural resources that they're on, and you need to punish them and kill them. If he would have um, seen the tap here. here, he would have known that the bills are over there. But instead, we're going to have a very big fight right now, and the Delia are just going into the longbows right now. This is actually looking very good because there is nothing to body block for those longbows, and those Delis are going to just hammer through. We have even an additional Falconet going in for those longbows, and it's got a very big shot on it. That has <laughs> one batch of the Falconets have got one just for Caverna so far this game. And in the background, the Cav Archers and the Abus guns are working very heavily uh, on those Dragoons, and they're going to also make very short work of them. So this fight has definitely got the way of Caverna right now. And yeah, that Falconet is going to take a long time to try and take down. But why is this Falconet sieging a manor? Come on, let's go. Go forward. All the Dragoons are dead. If we're going to see uh, Delhi, which very good Caverna, he is going to follow this up with Delhi. He could clean all of those longbows right now. Uh, especially with only one stable out of Brit and being to only single produce um, his Dragoons. It's looking very, very bad for Rado and very, very good for Caverna right now. And Caverna is going to build a TP with his Explorer. So he is going to own oh, with his Explorer is dead. Oh no, but he's going to build with a Vill. And is he going to see the villagers? <gasps> no. He isn't. He doesn't see them. That is unfortunate. I love that how he's shipping. Can we look at his deck? Is, is that really the best card that he could be sending right now? He can ship Mamelukes. He can just sell all his... Oh, yeah, just... just... Just save, save for Mamelukes, man. That's that's the GG. That's a, that's an easy GG card. He's shipping yeah. a gold triple in H1. <laughs> <laughs> it's like even eight Janissaries. Even like, eight Janissaries imagine Janissaries how exactly. long? Imagine how long it will take. Uh, even 600 gold is better. Like, how long does that trickle now take to equal the resources that eight Janissaries gives? Eight Janissaries is what 1k 1k resources. Yeah. Like, and um, and what how is long like, does that one gold trickle take? Around about a thousand seconds. Between a thousand to seven hundred seconds. Which like, is a that, very, very long time <laughs> for it to try and needs to fail. chip an age free card. And, and, and yet, I mean, that is an instance where you would 100% market sell everything just to get Mamelukes because um, Mamelukes is, is basically securing the win to this game. Oh, 100%. Um, but can Caverna finally see those? He, he does. He does, he sees all the villagers, and if I'm him, I just go back and I go for those villas. I, I just right click the deli over here, and there we go, and you finish yeah. the game. I think he might be seeing them, he's going over that way. Yeah, finally. and Radovan is, is, is still stuck uh, behind the knees, finally going this way, and I, I think we're going to see a a very big uh, GG once finally those deli hit those villagers. And yeah, we have how many villagers here for Brit? We have... Oh, 17 villagers, yeah. This is he's done well. He's done well, oh. to be honest. He was he, with one TC. He's, he's, you know, he's beaten Caverna's three TCs. Caverna's never been able to overtake, so... Yeah, um, until now. Fair play. Yeah, now finally. Until now, yeah. Ahead on bills. So this is looking very bad for Radovan and very good for Caverna. And do you think those Abus can... I think those Abus can wipe out the longbows in a head-to-head -head fight right now if they manage to... Um, it, I, I, it depends. It's debatable. Um, you need very good micro. Those Delis are connecting and the longbows are shooting the Deli instead of shooting the, the anti-cav and letting the Dragoons deal with the Deli. So the Abus are getting some extra shots in and again, that one Falconet. <laughs> that one Falconet is creeping up and is going to do AoE damage to all the units right now. And this is looking like a GG and... I want to see a very good game, but not a not a very good game, a good game played by Caverna, which got him to a point to the late game, and the late game is what Caverna really drives. He's um, managing everything better when he's plentiful, you know, when he's got resources, when he's got bills, and there we go, he manages to take game three, and ladies and gentlemen, this series lives on in the south part of the map, in the color blue, we have the one and only Caverna TV playing as the Yermans and in the top of the map in the color yellow we have Rado playing as the Horror Shani. Now I hope this is not a bug and he just forgot to place his Discovery Travel because uh, you want to have that uh, 
that dog building quite quickly because oh, okay. if you're not going to build it quicker after the nerf of the the training time of the dog it's going to be very very slow and there we go he finally got it up um that's what she did germans yep that's hey oh what's going on right now and there we go caverna doing basic germany opening opening with a market over here yeah 40 coin found also the wood chopping classic classic dock bug that was yeah I remember uh, when when the game first uh, when D first was a thing, that dock bug <laughs> that lasted for such a long time. It was a lot worse back then. But seeing it seeing it there just just brought back some bad memories of when D first came out. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> I remember that. He, he got it back up. He got it back up. So it's all it's all dandy. He's only going to miss it like an extra 10, 15 seconds. So uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but yeah, Germany versus Havn Shoney. Cool. This should be a good matchup, actually. Yep, it's actually a very good matchup. Now, when we're talking about the higher elos, this is one of the most fun matchups in the game. Obviously. Now, Caverna didn't do his homework on his treasure guardians. You're supposed to shoot this guy. You're not supposed to melee him down. But she has a very big, interesting hammer. So, she looks like the type of girl to go up in personal, doesn't she? Gerhard yeah, you do. Oh yeah, she, is that is that the uh, the beer lady? Oh god! Oh, <laughs> oh, it's a beer, right? It's not a hammer. She's actually beating it with a beer. beer no, mug. yeah, it's a beer mug. Yeah. <laughs> Big old Stein. <laughs> Big old Stein. Yo, we got is hunger in the chat. Yeah. You already know, big boy. Monster. Let's go, Hunger. We got a freeway going on. Hey, you Yeah. This is the only freeway I want to have between two beautiful casters and myself, the small Asian twink, to kind oh of complete god. it off. Oh my god! Oh my god! You are the twink. <sighs> Horrible. Why did you have to say that exactly after I ate? It's not not a my stomach's not having a party after those words right now but anyway question does germany have hunting dogs or did he over macro by 50 50 oh no he doesn't oh, oh. that's oh God, that's on. a big problem he's gonna have an idle age up because of that and ornament no oh man yeah now, if Caverna is paying attention, he should notice on this map in particular with the line of sight that Howd will be on water. Does he have a water deck? Because if he doesn't... He does have an anti-water deck, which is very nice. Very nice. It's nice to see that he worked on this for here, but Hello? oh my god, he's look, he's going to have to stick to 600 food instead of being at around 700 yep. right now. Oh, this is, this yeah. is not good. This is really, really bad. Not getting yeah, it's gonna dogs. slow his age up. He's gonna notice seconds. it now when when he's going to age and he's going to be kicking himself. Look, we're almost oh. at three twenty when he clicks up. This is very very late. And compare this to to Harun Shani to just click it up, but he's going to click up with the messenger. He's gonna be an age ahead of him for about half. A oh, Caverna's in danger too because. He... Howden should know that he's going to want a trading post, and it looks like the explorer is chasing him. And if he gets him down before that trading post gets built, that's oh, going to be a no. big problem. Oh man! Just, oh, go south. Hey, just go hide, 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 hide. Whatever you do, hide. Oh my god! You have to know as a Germany player that you cannot lose your explorer age one. You can't go after big treasures because Ooh, that yeah, trading post. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta keep your explorer alive and not take big treasures because that trading post is so noticeable without that XP curve as Germany. You get your Ulans out slower, your three settler wagons out slower. Not only that, his hunting dog's tech is coming in late, and oh man, this is not looking good. This is looking very, very wow. bad right now, and we're, we're, we're seeing the four uh, Kanye horsemen being shipped right now while we can still see some fishing boat production. We're, we're gonna have uh, what is it, five boats. Uh, gonna be totaled to twenty villagers. He can even ship the twenty, the five build afterwards. Be completely fine with it. He's also gonna macro for the big button. Now the the Kanye are going to come in time for the Warha to build, so he can ship them from his forward base. Let's see if he actually changes the the military shipment point though. He he does just in the last seconds. And yeah, I honestly think this is up. such a 
I th honestly think this is such an insane build. Like, every time I play Haddon Shoney and I see them doing this, like he's gonna have five cav, uh, sorry, four cav in his base at five minutes, and he's booming behind. He's, he's on like 20, 21 villagers right now because of the water boom. So like, whenever I play Haddon Shoney on the water map, like it feels like such an OP build to me. Like it's, it's so strong, and now he's gonna just be able to keep the pressure up the entire time whilst essentially having two TCs. Because having the boats is basically two TCs. So Caverna needs to understand that he's on the water. If he doesn't, if he doesn't do something about the water in the next sort of three or so shipments, I think Radovan's just going to run away with it with the eco side of it. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Now he is shipping the settler wagon because he has to right now. Because if not, he'll just get overwhelmed uh, economically. But again, what did we speak about the last three games? Like the herding. Look where this hunt is right now. If those can just great, sit over it? there, if those can sit over there, it's done for. He can't gather any food because his invades to moose are almost done with, and he is still just refusing to herd in his hunts. And he's shipping a 700 coin shipment. Oh no! Hi, hiya! That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. That wasn't even a back herd. That was a. Uh... He just shot it back. Yeah. Only getting out two crossbows as well is like. Against how you can't just immediately go for H3 because that Tomahawk big button, all the Kanye Wests, and just Ienas will be able to and come in and just. The coin is not coming in at the time. He needs those eight crossbowmen. He needs something to defend this push with because if he lets Redovan take down enough houses, etc., he's going to be in a very, very ugly situation. And those Ulans are, are catching the Kanye. Let's see if he has a little bit of micro in him and saves as much as HP as he needed on the Ulan. He didn't really have to, but anyways, uh, uh, that 700 coin is looking very redundant to me right now. I mean, what does that coin even get him at this point? It just sl slows down his already slow shipment curve without that trading post. He's got no wood. He's only got 50 in the bank. He's already going to be housed after the next shipment and a couple of bills. And oh, the actually. Yeah. Sorry for cutting you off, Hulk, bro. Um, actually, Radovan is looking very committed to this H2 while not having a particularly big mass. He has 18 Tomahawks, but uh, Caverna has some crossbows of himself. If he would uh, be able to raid right now, it would have been better because Radovan isn't doing a very good job of, uh, of hurting himself. And Radovan has, has shipped the 600 coins, so he's shipped the four Kanye five, uh, 600 coin 5 bill. So his tempo is going to be slow. He is going to pull ahead economically, but if Caverna manages to get a, an age up, it's not all bad for him at the moment, I think. Yeah, and, and Radovan, I don't know, like, Radovan is fine to stay age 2 here. He's got the dock that's been uncontested. You know, he's, he, he's got natural resources. He's absolutely fine. He's applying pressure. But he needs to be on his ass. He needs to be on Caverna's ass constantly. Look how much time he's given Caverna to age up. He's, how many musketeers is he on? How many tomahawks is he on? He's got a huge mass of age two units, but he's not doing anything with it. And wow, that he's just allowed Caverna to age up for free, essentially, there. Yeah, he's got 23 villagers. Huge mistake. 23, uh, tomahawks right now. He's training some Kanye Wests, but... Uh... I think, alas, they're not going to come in time, especially if Corinna just uh, gets an H3 ship okay. and he's going to have four Ulans plus another three for the age up. They're going to do uh, a lot of damage. Uh, no, 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 not now, not now. Too early. Way too early. Why? So early. That was that was bad. Bad minimum and pop. Caverna does not make these mistakes usually. I always remind them like, wait, wait for it. It's gonna come, and you will be able to ship it. But not, that, now's not the time. Um, that that's just yeah. a wasted minimum shipment right now. And he should really look out for it because he knows the time push is coming. But anyways, I think he holds this time push nice. regardless of what happens. Even if he ships the the eight skirmishers right now. He's gonna have an next addition of three Ulans on right. top of the four Ulans that he already has, plus uh, the TC focusing on those Kanyas. He can wipe those Kanyas out, and then it's only Musketeers, and those Musketeers are not really posing a threat to to this German army right now. <laughs> this was looking so good for Radovan about two minutes ago. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> he gave those those two minutes to Caverna for free, essentially. And if there's one thing you don't want to do, is you do not, do not want to let Germany get into H3 because their shipment pain train is going to be absolutely painful. War wagons are going to be so difficult to deal with as well. He's got no Aena. This is just, this is just looking so rough now. All of a oh. sudden. 
picking off the explorer that was really nice and he didn't even get to use the shotgun ability and that could have honestly done a lot there to help him out but yeah once the war wagons come out and if he gets a stable for vet ulan it's oh man i mean this game just turned on its head like applying no pressure when you have the best h2 eco and rush ability is like why would you why not? I mean, eat, just take down a couple of houses, kill some villagers, take down the outpost, like, idle him, and then, you know, just boom behind it, get to three yourself, and then you get forest prowlers and a nice mass of tomahawks behind it, but yep. now he's just in a terrible position. I am shocked he almost finished the batch. I'm happy about that. Now he is shipping with three, uh, <laughs> he is shipping with three war vehicles. He can't really push without them because those will are not going to lose. He, he's got a lot of Kanyars right now. I hope he's not going to make the same mistake as in the USA game and just preemptively push because Radovan uh, is seeing this and this he, can, is, he knows this he can is how take you this lose out. The game. He knows he can take this out. Caverno, you have to back off. Thank you. Please, yeah. back off. Showing yes. your opponent your army right now was a mistake in by itself. You just have to somehow get more units out on the field that can do something and you're not going to siege down a war with pure skirmishers so please make sure oh my god no caverna caverna please not like this please please <laughs> oh my god why is he so aggressive against cav he has no anti-cav and he's being so aggressive radavon could could lick he could have taken that fight 30 seconds ago and he, he would have cleaned uh, and then there would have been absolutely zero tempo for Gavetta. Oh my goodness me. Most this players this are is making giving me such weird decisions right now. <laughs> They're like, Radovan could have right clicked like a million times and Caverna should never be pushing right now. And Caverna actually got away with pushing. <laughs> this is not helping my anxiety, I have to say. This game is giving me heart palpitations. And the worst thing about this is Radovan is going to be aging right now. And Caverna finally has a stable, so he's going to get more war wagons out. This is this is Caverna's time to actually apply pressure and do some big damage. If he manages to find those villagers again over here on the right side, he can do a lot of damage, but instead he's deciding to take the conservative way to try and take down the corral or any more units spot for him. Yeah, he's going to be able to take down that corral, um, which is going to leave Radovan okay. on. 13 Kanye, which is respectable, but it's not going to be enough uh, with the reinforcement, uh, reinforcement batch of... Uh, yeah. War wagons that is coming out for him. Yeah, yep, yeah, there we go. He's, he's gonna start hammering those wheels right now. That's already two wheels gone down. Is there gonna be a third or a fourth? Yes, the third villager is going down. He is going to get a second war wagon. No, he's going to get a better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's probably an indicator of him going to shift the nine wheel and Yes, there we go. Nine wheel are going to be on the way. And now Germany has an army that is looking very scary because those Tomahawks are. Basically useless right now, aren't they? Uh, I mean, yes and no. It, it, if you can get up to age three, get some skirmishes out. The Tomahawks will serve a purpose. But I like what Radovan's doing here. He's cutting off the reinforcements. He's going to get at least one war wagon there. Pick one more oh, wagon out. That's even. nice. He isn't even going to get that war wagon. He's going to get nice, nice pull trick. trick. No, that was good, micro. Survive. Oh my god, this is actually quite big. Both of them survived. And is this war going to go up? No, those bullets are just going to get caught, are they? But it's gonna go down now, so that doesn't really do anything. And yeah, the nine Lulans are in. Uh, Radovan is in H3, but no, not yet, right? Because he aged up with the messenger. But it's gonna be a really, really slow, and that little that built that forehead is also gonna go down right now. And as I was saying, Germany is looking very, very strong right now. Germany should be pushing the, the, the military though. He's, he's sieging barracks, he's taking a few villages down, which is good, but he's sieging markets and stuff like that. He's just he's just uh, allowing Radovan way too much time. He needs to punish him a lot harder here. Nine Ulans is coming in. He really should be diving in against the military mass or against the TC. I think he's just wasting too much time here. That is true. We are seeing uh, more Kanye horse, horse, horsemen being trained instead of getting veterancy. Now he's getting veterancy. But Kanye is not going to be the answer here. You got way too many Ulan and, uh, and War Wagons. Um, I would have liked to see some Musket Riders maybe to try and combat the, the Ulan. He, he does have four methods. But again, I see this game going to burn his way. And this could be really, really interesting. Are we going to get a decisive game 5 over here? Depends on the big fight and if he can make use of those forest rounds. He has popped the big button of Tomahawks, but again, those are colonial age uh, Tomahawks. They're not going to be able to do much. Okay, Thank you very much. He's kind of. He's so heavily popped right now. I yeah. mean, 
you know, destroying, I agree, Lion, the not chasing the army is definitely not ideal, but at the same time, destroying a longhouse with 15 population and their old cav combat coming in, if he gets this in, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, not many horse prowlers. Yeah. He is going to fight now, but the cav combat is eventually going to hit when when they're going to be in the middle of the fight. Let's hope that Ulans don't paper off and just die before they hit, but... This is actually really good surround with the Kanyas and the villagers are also really doing a very good job and the cap combat is in but it's a bit too late and all the anti cap is dead and all the Ulans are dead as well and does Caverna have anything to follow up with this? He doesn't really have any other army, he's got two skirmishers coming up but this is the Oh killer. my goodness. He completely cleaned him. And oh. who said that Tomahawks were going to be useless? Yes, me. I was wrong, completely. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, oh god. And, and yes, popping him was okay there, but like we saw, he got all of the all of the veterancy techs for all of his units, and he was allowed to age up. He was allowed to get a big button shipment from the TC. Like, he just bought him so much time, and that was a mistake by Germany. He played it way too safe. He should have dived in against that TC, or he should have dived in against the mass, the military mass that he had. Uh, that was his timing. That was when he needed to push, but he decided to kind of just run around the map and uh not really not really achieved too much other than taking markets and houses down yeah he, he was kind of again twiddling his thumbs not really deciding on what to do and the last couple of games i have to be honest I'm, I'm, oh no this is not oh no. no 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 i mean see, also is that a... but like 27 vils plus you know a few settler wagons versus that massive age two eco from radovan and a lot of the Germany score on Eco was from nine Ulans, three settler wagon or three war wagons and eight skirms, which we just saw got absolutely alt F forward. And now he's just oh man, that's a scary amount of cav. Yeah, Radovan is doing what Corona didn't do earlier. He's he knows he has the military advantage. He's just gonna push in and force a fight. And Caverna, all the while while he was fighting, he couldn't really, he didn't macro well enough, and that's why his eco is in the shambles situation that it is right now as well. And yeah, those Ulans, we all know how paper units Ulans are. Almost half HP of a Kanye horse, but they're all gonna go down. It's gonna be GG, and that's the end of the series, ladies and gentlemen. And I am going to announce it now. We have our first semi finalist. Of the cavern combat. <laughs> Rather than the dust. Yet. <laughs> Rather than feels the dust. I do not know. I think it should be Rather than voice the dust. I don't know where where Rado is from. But congratulations on winning a very good series against Caverna. Three one. Congratulations to Caverna as well. You played very good. The fact that you already got to the to the quarterfinals is an achievement in and by itself, Caverna. Really, you, you've done us very proud. Um, there's a couple of things that you will have to learn from the series, but it's very good because it's been one of the first series you've played that, uh, you know, at the, at the level that you're currently at. So, we got some things to do, we got some things to work on, but for now, this, this is looking very nice. This is a very fun series, and uh, yeah, this is all a matter of just uh, Caverna embracing defeat and accepting that it's over, and you can see the GG coming on any second now. Wants to just limp on for as long as possible. Maybe there might be an internet connection with Radovan. Who knows? Anything can happen. I demand a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching uh, really in my early days of vanilla um, uh, days when I was like probably like a, a teenager, I think, a young teenager, uh, watching Mr. Milo videos. If any of you two know who that is, I think that's way before your time. We're talking 2006, 2007. Mr. Milo telling me, you never know, your opponent might accidentally hit the hotkey to delete all of their units. So it's always worth just staying in the game and turtling for as long as possible. Caverna <laughs> tried, but there's the GG. Yeah. And no deletion of the units. Well played to both these guys. Caverna played solidly, but just... Do you know what the difference between these two was, the entire series? What I felt like the difference was? It just felt like Caverna... He didn't get outplayed. It just felt like Caverna made too many more... Caverna made more mistakes than Radovan. That's what it felt like. It feels like...